right so welcome back to the first topic of your thermodynamics basically uh, thermodynamics being ha or having more number of terms students get confused but not a problem we'll go gradually doing all the numericals so basically in chemical thermodynamics as we as a name suggest so let's see what does this mean thermo thermo means heat isn't it dynamics means that movement so basically we are going to study about the concepts you see only three or four concepts i'll be relating to different processes so if i have to use this word process okay right or processes what am i going to see in this process fine if there is certain amount of chemical energy involved so i'm to, you see when we study heat of fusion heat of vaporization heat of sublimation so every time i'll be using certain amount of chemical energy and a chemical reaction through which the energy is released or absorbed so the chem, the, the process which we are speaking if you are involving chemical energy right so this whole thing the process in which chemical energy and the chemical reactions happening is called chemical thermodynamics so what are we going to learn here basically whenever you are speaking about a, a concept so see now there is a chemical reaction now you are standing in a lab you are taking a test tube you are trying to you have certain reactants added to the test tube what do you do so if a required product is like you re, you require the set that particular product what do you do based on the reactants you start heating it or you put it in the ice bath isn't it that is what you do two variations now during this process when you are heating there are certain factors which are happening in the lab which you can't like conditions like heat you can feel exchange of energy that you can't see isn't it so certain factors will be always acting on that test tube right suppose if i have to speak about chemical thermodynamics in this chemical thermodynamics this particular chapter is going to predict what is the heat flow how much is a heat flown out of the system or the heat system has absorbed certain amount of heat it's going to speak about in terms of energy also how much amount of energy is exchanged whether the system is closed enough whether it is isolated whether it is open system like that it will be studying about different terminologies but every time i'll be using a chemical concept in that so the branch of chemistry which deals with a process in which there is a chemical energy involved which will speak about the heat heat flow it will speak about the energy flow or energy entry and uh, energy exchange or which will also speak about the feasibility of the reaction what is feasibility basically feasibility is whether the reaction will or you're getting <coughs> yes whether the reaction is allowed or will it is it possible is the process has come to stop is it feasible that means suppose if i say you today you're going to start at eight o'clock here at your house Uh, you have you know you started go, going like you you started your school on the uh, way suddenly you fell uh, like the sudden amount of rain or some some particular disaster then what do you say <coughs> then you'll <coughs> sorry then you'll opt for any public transport or you tend to either if not possible just go back so the feasibility of you going to the school whether can can you reach by picking up a transport is there a possibility to reach the school or is there a possibility feasibility that you will go back so that feasibility or the flexibility also it will explain so let us come back and see the different terms which i'm going to use in chemical thermodynamics So when I start with the terminology in thermodynamics, the first, the basic, simple terminology which you should remember, right? So here, what am I drawn? I have drawn a particular area in this whiteboard. I picked up certain amount of area and I have drawn a drawn a boundary. Now, according to thermodynamics, we have to first understand what is this. So what is a system? If I have to define system, is now what did I do? I picked up this area, isn't it? That is a given space. So system is a particular. point of matter i'm talking about this point what is matter something which a space in occupies volume isn't it so it's a space or a point of matter under study so when you write the definition how should you write system is a point of mass or a matter of space matter which is occupying certain amount of space under study is called system 
now what is the surrounding this whole board around the system yes so the remaining part of the system other than the system whatever is left out or the area around the system is called surroundings that is your second definition when i have to speak about boundary what is this boundary is an imaginary line just have assumed isn't it i have assumed okay this is a system the left out is surrounding so what is boundary now boundary is an imaginary line which separates the system as well as surroundings right that is the most important thing same same thing which i'm telling you you're standing in a lab you have a test tube in your hand so the test tube is under study that is your system now the area around the test tube the whole system or the, the place which is left out around the test tube is the surroundings now the border or the point where there is exchange of energy that is a boundary right the matter inside the test tube is a system the test tube separating the whole surrounding is a boundary and the left over place now what is the important thing boundary can be movable in some cases i'll be showing you how does the piston moving above and below right so once again we will we'll define system is the matter or the area under study first point when i have to speak about surroundings surroundings is the area which is present outside the system done boundary would be an imaginary line which separates the system as well as surroundings so as i said this can be movable sometimes immovable sometimes like you can just shift the piston and it can be thing now based on this concepts the system can be again divided into an open system as well as closed system okay we will see what are these what what happens in these open system and closed system So we have seen the definition of system surroundings and uh, your boundary. Now I said systems are again of two types. One will be your closed system, one will be open system. So basically, whenever you are speaking about thermodynamic systems, or whether it's physical thermodynamics or chemical thermodynamics, basically we are concentrating more on the matter which we are going to study. When you have certain amount of matter, right? Let's be solid, liquid, gas, whatever it is. We are going to concentrate among about only two important things, but that is the mass which we have taken under study and whether there is amount of energy that is transacted or exchanged and we will also see whether that particular reaction in later stages we will be seeing after exchange the reaction is feasible or not. Right. So in an closed system what is the first important thing you have to remember where well, I have taken a system which is sealed it is closed right so in that system there is certain amount of mass I have not told you what sort of mass how much is the mass but that mass is constant why here in this case in a, uh, if I have to define a clo in a closed system the mass remains constant there is no exchange of mass but though it is closed the certain amount of energy exchange can happen right in both the cases i'll be speaking about mass and energy m and e here also mass and energy so in an open closed system first concept mass remains constant but they may be exchange of energy why because this particular thing the boundary which we have now this is a system this is the surrounding this is a boundary the boundary which is there is movable it is flexible in some cases when we study it is flexible let me show you in an example suppose the same system i'm taking here what did i say i took a system of mass 2 kg now i have this boundary which is movable why because when, when i'm heating the system there's a certain amount of expansion right that gas is expanded and it has done work on the piston right or the boundary it moves now what happened in when it has expanded from this part it has moved to this part what is the amount of mass here also 2 kg here also 2 kg but what difference are you finding here the volume was 1 meter cube now the volume has become 3 meter cube that means there is certain amount of boundary movement of boundary so what is the conclusion in a closed system there is no exchange of mass but energy may or may not may, may be exchanged sometimes which will be seen in the later cases this is the example so remember this mass no and energy yes right so we uh, if i have to see the examples it is basically your uh, piston cylinders which has piston isn't it it's like that only suppose if i have to speak about open system again the same concept mass and energy what did i write i have written s for both that means in an open system 
they we also call it as control volume in this open system both there is both exchange of mass as well as energy happens because it is an open system i have not sealed it only for the diagram six see here this is also open this is also open in this case also it should be open so you see here this is your energy okay let us draw this one okay this energy i am drawing it here so this is your energy so because it is open both the mass and energy are exchanged here energy yes mass no because it remains constant and if i have to learn about this uh, open system example right your valves which you take yes your uh, big, bigger turbines where there's exchange of energy lot of missions where you have heat exchange we'll be studying about carnot cycle also right so wherever you have heat exchange that system can be called as an open system you can also use different different examples for the turbines as i said just now there's exchange of heat valves i said right so all these together make an open system now let us conclude closed system is a system where there is no exchange of mass but exchange of energy open system is a system which has both exchange of mass and energy right so after open system closed system what did we speak in open system we were speaking in terms of mass and energy only right now next type of system is isolated system what are you observing in this isolated system just see here in an isolated system we have an isolated boundary first important thing which you need to observe so everything whatever we are studying you need to have a system as well as surrounding so the most important thing in isolated system is as we know isolated means separated you have your friends some won't talk to you like completely isolated they get separated in the class isn't it so such systems where there is first important thing there is no heat exchange nothing will go out it is completely isolated separated out so heat exchange is zero at the same time work also zero at the same time mass exchange also is zero that means this system what is happening in the system then there is exchange of mass as well as energy where only between the system and the surrounding in that area that means every time there is amount of mass exchange as well as heat exchange happening in between or among them only so nothing is dealt with the outside world so that is why we call isolated system once again in an isolated system which has an isolated system boundary there is exchange of mass and energy among the system as well as surrounding together they both only will be exchanging mass and energy nothing with the outside world right so that is your isolated system now gradually we will be going into the topics of thermodynamics please concentrate what you do is try to make a tableau column like this make first is mass let's next is energy so here we have learned about three systems try to make open system try to make closed system try to make isolated system then tick wherever there is mass exchange tick wherever there is energy exchange tick